everybody, it is Spyro Senpai here, and welcome back to some more Tekken 8. It has been a while since I've uploaded a video on Tekken 8. I recently did a gameplay video on um, Lydia Sobieska. If you guys haven't checked, haven't checked, haven't checked that out, um, go ahead if you haven't. But um, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the legacy outfits that I happily own. Um, some interested me, some didn't. Um, but I bought them anyway just to show them off in this, uh, in this video, so hope you guys enjoy. Um, I will be doing a, uh, a gameplay video on Heihachi, and I recently saw the, uh, gameplay trailer for Terry. That video is definitely coming. I'm definitely going to be doing a video on Terry when he comes out. Um, but for now, let's take a look at the, um, legacy skins I have. I recently bought... The legacy skins for both Lars and Eliza. So let's take a look at Eliza's first and go on from there. Um, I recently went live on my Twitch. If you guys haven't uh, followed me on Twitch, um, I'll link the uh, I'll link my channel in the description of this video, like I always do. So let's check out some of these skins that I happily own. I don't have Jin's or, um, Shao Yu's, or, um, or, um, Laws, or Kings, or, um, Kazuya's, but I will eventually. And hopefully they'll add some more Legacy skins down the line. Hopefully. Oh, okay. I mostly get the first hit, but alright. So yeah, um, I was pretty excited to see Lars's um, Lars's outfit and um, Aliza's outfit return. Cause I love when fighting games bring back classic stuff in terms of characters, stages, um, outfits, etc. Mostly Mortal Kombat did it perfectly, but Tekken, eh, I never really followed up on Tekken stuff until, like, I played Tekken 7 and played and checked out some of their DLC. And their DLC aren't that bad, but I am pretty disappointed to see Heihachi return for Tekken 8, because I'm pretty sure he's dead. But yet, Street Fighter 6 brought back M. Bison, so it would make sense to do the same for Tekken 8 with Heihachi. But it is nice that we're finally getting guest characters in a Street Fighter game for once, you know. Whoa, what was that? Whoa! Oh yeah, I forgot Aliza is a cyborg, not really a human. Because I forgot that she can throw her own head as a bomb. And she has blades and rocket-powered wings. Oh yeah, I could not I I could not stop listening to this um soundtrack for the stage. Um I think this is called Seaside Beach, I think it's called. But yeah, definitely the best soundtrack for a stage ever. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the Wuxi Academy soundtrack for Mortal Kombat 1, when you're in the uh, practice mode in that stage, that soundtrack actually put me to sleep. A couple nights ago, I was, at, I, was uh, I was up until like 11 or something a couple nights ago, and like, and I was trying to sleep because my medicine didn't kick in, because I took my, my nighttime medicine late that night. And so I turned on the, uh, I put on the, uh, Wuxi Academy theme practice session option, or, uh, version on YouTube, and it put me right to sleep. I don't think any, I don't think I've ever listened to music when I'm asleep, but, but yeah, that was crazy. Oh, let's take a look at Lars. I Lars, to be honest, has the best legacy skin, in my opinion. Da, 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 da. 
but definitely I was pretty excited to see Huao Rang's return, even though his didn't really, even though he didn't really, his outfit didn't come with the hairstyle, but it did anyway, but it was added, so. But what really disappoints me is that his Tekken 7 outfit doesn't come with the, um, the hairstyle and the hair color, because he has a bit of orange and his hair, but the rest of his hair is black in the Tekken 7 outfit. Which is the one thing that disappoints me. But, it's alright. Tekken 8 is still a good game. They did the shop and current and microtransactions perfectly. A lot perfectly. Along with Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6 did microtransactions did, um, perfectly too. Can't say for Mortal Kombat 1, because you know, I guess Mortal Kombat isn't meant for their microtransactions. I wouldn't be surprised if Injustice 3 did the same. Because MK9 and Injustice 1 didn't do microtransactions. And I don't think MKX did either. I think they only did like DLC skins, stages, characters, and easy fatality tokens. Yeah, to be honest, Lars's classic outfit is definitely the best. Better than um, his Tekken 7 outfit. Oh, didn't dodge that, did you? Yeah, we are almost at 600 subscribers, guys. Can you believe that? We have reached 573 subscribers. We are so close to reaching our goal. And that, um, Takeda vs. Homelander video is right around the corner, so let's keep the subscribing going. I am trying to hit 30, um, 30 followers on Twitch, because, um, I want to try their story option. So if you guys want to help me out by... Helping me hit 30 followers on Twitch, that'll be great as well. And they also added a feature where you can also upload video clips on their story option. But yeah. Oh yeah, I also have a legacy outfit for June Kazama as well. I forgot to mention. So, yeah. I think that was like the first legacy outfit I, I actually bought. Yeah, Steve is not my favorite character to use. Cause his most of his moves are all dodging abilities. See look. Like hold on. See? Like mostly just dodging. I get it he's a boxer, but this is why I try avoiding avoiding to play Steve. But his legacy outfit doesn't look that bad either. Imagine if they if they um, made another punch out game for the Switch and Steve Fox was a guest character that you could fight or play as. Yeah, if you guys you guys don't remember, um, there was a game on Nintendo called Punch Out, which one of the characters, um, Little Mac, was a character in Smash Brothers. Let's do it. One, two. Ooh. Ooh. Who do you think would win in a, um, in a boxing fight? Uh, Ed from Street Fighter 
or Steve from Tekken? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Who would win in, that, in, in a boxing match? I don't know if Ed is a boxer or something, but he has boxing attacks, but... I mean, he was trained by Balrog, so Balrog is also a boxer, so it would make sense, though. See, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Come on. That. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't know how he... I, I think he plays the same way in Tekken 7. I don't know. I I stopped playing Tekken 7. So. I don't think anyone else... Oh. Um... Lily does? Yeah, she does. You forgetting. That's funny, because there's two characters that, um, from two different games, both from Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8 named Lily. Because there's a character in Street Fighter 6 named Lily, but her name is spelled a Y. And then there's a character in Tekken 8 named Lily, but her, her is spelled with an I. That's crazy. Oh. Oh. Imagine what Mai is gonna. I mean, Mai recently got announced for the next uh, Fatal Fury game, and that is actually pretty cool. Yeah, there's not that many fighting games I branched out to. Like, I played a little bit of King of Fighters, I played a lot of Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, played a little bit of Tekken, played a little bit of. I played a lot of Soul Calibur, because Soul Calibur is a good, a good fighting game. Dead or Alive, well. I kind of go off and on on that game. I mean, it is one of my favorite, um, favorite fighting games, but I kind of, I kind of miss the Dead or Alive franchise. I really hope that they make another Dead or Alive game. Because Dead or Alive was a pretty cool game. Even though it took, took some time for me to get used to the fighting controls, but I loved it. Konoka still, still remains my main in Dead or Alive 6, and I believe Dead or Alive 5 last round. So. And she remains one of my favorite characters, also. But I doubt they're gonna make another Dead or Alive game because of how risque and, you know, you know, very, you know, you know, how very risque and revealing it is, but but I hopefully they'll make another Dead or Alive game because <clears throat> it seems like a very popular game. I mean, I enjoyed it. The story was pretty cool. Although I still haven't beat, I'm still at the end of the uh, Dead or Alive Six story. I have to, I'm at the uh, I'm at the fight where I have to um, beat um, Rido. I think Rido's the final boss. But yeah, no matter what three characters I use to beat him, I still can't beat him. Like I used Ayane, Hayate, and Kasumi, and still couldn't beat him. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe he's a combo based character. You have to beat him. I don't know. But you guys remember when 
Um, you guys remember when I think it was King of Fighters? Is Mai from King of Fighters or is she from Fatal Fury? But then Kula cool, Diamond also made a guest appearance. Rachel from um, uh, Ninja Gaiden also made a guest appearance along with Mai. So it was pretty cool to see some guest characters in the game. It is pretty sad that most of their DLC stuff has been delisted. Well, mostly Dead or Alive 5. Most of their DLC stuff has been delisted. Like their Attack on Titan stage. Mai also was delisted from DLC because she was also a DLC character. Most of Dead or Alive's characters were all DLC if you bought the Core Fighters version. Because if you had the Core Fighters version, you would have to buy all of them. Well, not all of them. I'm sure there were some characters that were unlocked or playable from the start. But, yeah. Yeah, I played a little bit of Dead or Alive 5 last round. I never really was a fan of it. I did do a Let's Play of it recently, uh, a few years ago. Alright, um... Let's do one more. I think I... I think those are the only... Yeah, those are the only Legacy outfits I have, but let's just let's play as... Let's show off hers one more time. And let's let's show off Lars again. Get ready for the next battle. I love the llamas are just walking around in the background or like in the like stage. Like why? Why have them just walking around while we're fighting? Like you could never pull that off in real life. Just like have two people fighting in the, in the middle of like a llama pen while the llamas are just you know, doing their business, just walking around and pretending you're, you're not, you guys aren't even there. That's funny. So that was the Legacy outfits for Tekken 8. Hope you guys enjoyed. I know I'm still missing a few of them, but those are the ones that I happily own. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Legacy outfit is for each character in Tekken 8. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.